Star Wars Celebration 2017 has come and gone, and fans were treated to a plethora of awesome content, from the Last Jedi trailer to the 40th anniversary panel and of course, the Battlefront 2 trailer, which blew many fans away faster than the Death Star 2 going up in smoke. From all the awesome reveals, it seems that Battlefront 2 is righting the wrongs of its predecessor and that EA and DICE are making this one awesome package that aims to deliver an incredibly entertaining experience. So prepare to make the jump to hyperspace by setting your likes to smashed and engaging the subscribe button. No Season Pass One of the biggest criticisms the first Battlefront game had was how it handled DLC, specifically its really expensive Season Pass. In short, gamers weren't too happy to learn that half of the game was locked behind a pay-to-play barrier. The cheapest way to get all the additional content, which included new heroes, maps, and modes, was to get the Season Pass, which was priced at $50 on top of the $59 US you already paid for the base game. So in other words, gamers had to essentially cough up the price of admission twice in order to play content that should have been in the game in the first place. It wasn't a popular move, and Battlefront saw usership decline rapidly in the months following its release. The outcry was pretty loud, so loud in fact, that it seems EA heard the noise and actually addressed the problem. It was revealed at Celebration that Battlefront 2 would completely abandon the season pass. This was huge news, a sign that the developer and the publisher listened to the fans and the critics and made appropriate changes. The question now remains, just how will DLC be handled this time around? Will it be free included in the disc, or will gamers have to pay a flat fee that ultimately adds up to $50 again? That remains to be seen, but for now, we can at least be comfortable knowing the initial business model for the game has changed. Single Player The Battlefront reboot was a pretty fun game, but we gotta admit it was pretty shallow experience. One of the contributing factors to that experience was the sad truth that there really wasn't a single player mode in the game. Sure, there was some offline single player missions, but fans wanted a story mode. A story mode like the Rise of the Empire mode in the 2009 edition of Battlefront, which followed the 501st Clone Battalion's journey through the prequel era before making the transition to Vader's go-to Stormtroopers. That game also featured the insanely addictive Galactic Conquest mode. The reason why there was no single player mode in the 2015 version? EA believed that no one would play a story mode for that kind of a game. Boy, it looks like the data was very wrong in this case, as the desire for a single player mode was one of the most vocal requests that fans wanted. Thankfully, Battlefront 2 will have a single player mode. Produced by Motive Studios and written by Walt William of Spec Ops The Line fame and former IGN critic Mitch Dyer, the game follows Commander Aiden Versayo and the Elite Inferno Squad as they face the second Death Star's destruction and the death of the Emperor. Instead of giving up, they decide to strike back and continue the fight against the Rebellion harder than ever. It's great to see a story mode from the point of view of the Empire. We hope that we really get into their state of mind and their motivations. Plus, we get a canon story that takes place after the events of Return of the Jedi, a time period that really hasn't been explored much. The cherry on the top? Players will take control of Luke and Kylo Ren at certain parts of the story, offering a glimpse into their lives pre-Force Awakens. Sweet! All eras. The 2015 entry of Battlefront had some pretty sweet moments, from protecting the rebel base on Hoth to fighting on the beaches of Scarif in the DLC pack. There was something missing from the final product, though. Other eras! The first game focused on content exclusively based around the original films, so locations like Tatooine, Endor, and Bespin were the focal point, along with rebels and stormtroopers. This was a pretty big step backwards when you consider the last or iterations of the games on the original Xbox, PS2, and PC had maps and characters from the prequel era as well as the original saga. Considering that the 2015 version came out months before The Force Awakens, one would have thought some new content would have come down the pipeline eventually in DLC format, but that never happened. Well, except for the Rogue One DLC. This time, however, fans can joyfully yell, Roger, Roger, over their mics as battle droids, clones, rebels, Imperials, Resistance, and the First Order will all be playable factions in the game along with their respective heroes. We can't wait to load up a prequel-themed map and lay waste to some clankers as a Republic Battalion in Naboo City of Thede or the rainy clone world of Kamino. Here's hoping that the game lets us play out our deepest combat fantasies by allowing stormtroopers on Naboo or battle droids on Hoth. Only time will tell. Class-based multiplayer in an unusual move, the 2015 Battlefront game decided to forego classes altogether. Instead, they implemented a weapon loadout system which could be customized or upgraded by spending in-game points. Or real currency. It was an unusual and unorthodox approach, considering class-based multiplayer is the standard. The style focuses on team dynamics where everyone plays a specific, crucial role as opposed to just running around shooting everything in sight. Case in point, the Battlefield games, also made by DICE, operate on a class-based system. 
where players are encouraged to work in teams in order to get the job done. Basic infantry have different goals and uses when compared to medics or snipers. And if a player decides to ignore their class, well, that's a surefire way to end up on the losing side. It's a relief to learn that Battlefront 2 will be reintroducing class-based multiplayer. Each class will be able to be leveled up and modified, so no matter if you like playing as a droid sniper or first order sniper, the two share the same upgrade tree, which sure beats having to do the same thing over and over again to get the same perks. The upgrades will also carry over to the heroes and to the various starships made available to the player. The currently announced classes include Officer, Assault, Heavy, and Specialist. No random pickups on maps. One of the more frustrating elements of Battlefront was its pickup system on the map. Scattered throughout the various maps, players could pick up glowing blue discs in order to receive a temporary boost. These could be anything from rocket launchers or grenades to respawning as a ship in low orbit. This system was adequate, but it didn't exactly carry the desired effect among fans. When compared to Battlefront, the map pickups felt cheap and unsatisfying. Instead of jumping into a prepped X-Wing ready for takeoff, players found themselves running across the map in hopes of finding a particular upgrade. What's worse was the enemy players who camp near upgrade spawn points and mercilessly shoot down players who were looking for specific power-ups. Brutal. Thankfully, this mechanic has been completely scrapped in Battlefront 2. Instead, players will go through a more traditional system of gathering goodies. If you want to fly a ship, you'll have to run to the actual ship, much like Battlefield. This may lead to a charged frenzy of players going for the vehicles at first, but once that settles down, things should ease into a nice, violent rhythm. It seems like DICE and EA learned a great deal from the success of Battlefield 1 in 2016 and are implementing some of those mechanics to Battlefront. This is something that many fans were hoping for when the first Battlefront was originally unveiled. Heroes In a welcome return, heroes new and old will make their way into the battle once again. As we mentioned earlier, the game will be covering all eras, so prepare to dust off your dual-blade lightsabers. Instead of focusing only on original trilogy characters like Luke and Vader, the sequel plans to expand their hero roster with confirmed names including Skywalker, Kylo Ren, Rey, Yoda, and Darth Maul with even more to be announced. We can also expect the return of hero ships like the Millennium Falcon, as well as Boba Fett's Slave 1, Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter, and Luke's X-Wing, which will likely be an upgraded version of the original design. To unlock a hero in the 2015 version, players had to collect one of those upgrade discs that we mentioned previously. This would respawn them as a super powerful hero for a short period of time. Thankfully, things will be different in Battlefront 2, according to EA. To get a hero this time around, players will have to use an in-game resource in order to unlock the hero on that particular map. While we're not 100% certain as to what this entails, we do know that it means that players will earn points based on certain actions performed in the game. Saving up enough points should allow you to unlock a hero. The question remains, do these points bank over multiple matches, or are they only good for the match you are currently playing? More maps Let's be real here. The first Battlefront didn't offer much in the way of map variety. The base package launched with four different planets out of the box, followed by the downloadable Jakku map a few weeks later. The initial four planets in question were Tatooine, Hoth, Endor, and Sullust the latter of which had never been seen before in a game or film despite its name drop in Return of the Jedi. Battlefront 2015's DLC maps added Bespin, Scarif, and the Death Star along with two new maps on Tatooine and Sullust, so it's safe to say it didn't have the best variety. Thankfully, things already looked jam-packed for the sequel. In the trailer alone, fans got to see Tatooine, Hoth, and Endor again, along with the Scarif Shield base from Rogue One, Starkiller base, Maz's castle on Takodana, and the new planet Vardos, where main character Aiden Versayo comes from. Thankfully, EA has released a plethora of concept art for the game, which shows off a lot of new planets for fans to look forward to. These worlds include Yavin 4, Kamino, Jakku, and quite possibly Jeddah, as well as the Wookiee planet of Kashyyyk, which was a fan favorite in 2005. That's a lot of planets to look forward to, and if it's anything like the last game, we should get around four maps per planet. Don't think we'll be getting bored of this one quickly. Space Battles at first, space battles were completely absent from Battlefront. Sure, fans could luckily stumble upon a ship pickup and respawn to the cockpit of a starfighter above the map, but dogfighting in the atmosphere just doesn't have the same it factor of duking it out in outer space. Battlefront eventually added this feature with the Death Star DLC, but most people thought the controls and the feeling of flight were mm, meh and not really the main draw. Things are different this time around, as Criterion Games, the studio behind the Burnout series, are in charge of all the ship and space-related segments for this title. 
title. It's a smart move on EA's part to let different studios focus on certain aspects of the game in order to get the best possible product. The Burnout games are critically well received and sold really well with fans. By having them translate their knowledge and experience to Star Wars while DICE focuses on refining the shooter aspects, EA is cultivating a more focused and hopefully exciting final product. Now, there will be maps 100% dedicated to space dogfights, done by a studio who understands vehicular mayhem, so it should be a great step forward in making fans want to get into the cockpit of an X-Wing, much like the beloved Rogue Squadron games did. We know for sure the space over Scarif will be a map, but time will tell what other locations will be flying over. Pre-order bonuses and versions We know, pre-order is something of a dirty word in the gaming community, but we thought we'd still inform you on what you'd get if you do decide to go down that road. There will be two versions of the game to purchase, the Standard Edition and the Deluxe Edition. The Elite Trooper Deluxe Edition retails at $80 US and comes with the following perks. Weapon upgrades for all four classes, including the Blurg 1120 Blaster Rifle and the Laser Trip Mine Special Ability, among others, and upgraded classes for those looking for a head start against the competition. This edition also allows you to access the game three days earlier on November 14th, so if you can't wait another day to start blasting nerf herders, this is the version for you. The Standard Edition comes with a base basic game, but no matter what version you decide to pick up, you'll get a pre-order bonus based around The Last Jedi. In it, you'll have access to Kylo Ren and Rey's appearance based on how they look in the film. You'll also receive a series of epic modifiers for the heroes, including one for the Falcon, one for Rey and Kylo, and one for a currently unnamed First Order hero ship. We're not too sure what an epic modifier is, but it certainly sounds like some kind of perk or bonus. Battlefront 2 will of course be out on November 17th, 2017. Inferno Squad just who are Inferno Squad? Fans can actually find out this summer as Battlefront 2 will receive a companion novel set right after the events of Rogue One, detailing the formation of the Special Forces unit. Unlike Twilight Company, Battlefront 2015's companion novel, Inferno Squad actually appears in the game, so it'd be great to get some backstory on the characters we're going to play as. Written by Christy Golden, who revealed the book at Celebration, this novel begins in the aftermath of Rogue One. The Empire is vexed over the Death Star plans being stolen, so they create a new squad to take out the remnants of Saw Gerrera's partisans. But Instead of going in blasters ablazing, Inferno Squad uses their superior tactics to infiltrate the Partisans and destroy them from within. Sounds like an interesting read about an interesting unit that we are interested in playing as. It's great to know that we'll be controlling a character who has done some serious damage in her career and not just some faceless disposable grunt, just like the one the squad saves at the start of the trailer. We really hope the events of the novel are referenced in some way, shape, or form in the game. It would heighten the experience for those who've read it, and it's about time they started seriously weaving their universe together. Together. Those were 10 things you should know about Star Wars Battlefront 2. Will you be picking up the Galactic Shooter? What era or map are you most looking forward to playing? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to fire that armed and fully operational subscribe button to stay in the loop with your new pals at the Gamer. <laughs>